everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this slightly crazy but I'm utterly obsessed with really soft <laughs> pom-pom blanket. If you love all things crochet and are passionate about the craft then you have definitely come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my future crochet videos. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you not only how to crochet this amazing pom-pom blanket itself, I'm also gonna show you how you do this border. So stay tuned to the end of the video where we cover that too. So this blanket that I have here finished on the table, all the dimensions for it, the written pattern, and all the materials is on my blog, which I have linked to in the description box below. So you can find it over there. However, you can make it a bit smaller. Originally, I planned for this to be a baby blanket, but I fell in love with it. It's just so mad. I absolutely love it. And it is so soft. I can't begin to describe how soft these little pom-poms are. So because of that, I actually decided that as crazy as it is, I wanted this for me. So I made it much, much larger. So it is actually a full sort of adult lap blanket size. So materials wise, what you're going to need is a ball of this pom-pom type yarn. Any brand will do. It's a yarn that has these sort of fluffy pom-poms in between cord sections. So you need a ball of this. Now it goes pretty far. For my actual blanket itself, this is how much of one of those balls I have left over. So I've actually got quite a lot of it left. I teamed my pom-pom yarn with Shapier's Chunky Monkey yarn. It's quite a nice fat anti-pilling. It's got a beautiful sheen. This is what I used with my pom-pom yarn. You're also going to need a, a six millimeter crochet hook and of course a pair of scissors. Now, before we start, we need to do a little bit of surgery on the pom-pom yarn itself. Now, the first couple of pom-poms, you want to trim these off so you have quite a sort of decent long length of the cord itself. Now, go carefully because it is very easy to accidentally fray the whole lot. You want to get some scissors, sort of flatten it out, and very, very carefully start trimming away that pom-pom. As I said, go careful. It's oh so easy <laughs> to cut the actual cord itself. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. It's a little bit thicker, but that's okay. I think I'll be pushing my luck if I trimmed any more. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off this second pom-pom as well. Okay, that'll do. So I've got two pom-poms trimmed off. Now just pop all that mess to the side and your pom-pom yarn to the side, and we'll come back to that in just a moment. Okay, so with your chunky monkey yarn and your six millimeter crochet hook, go ahead and pop a slip knot on your hook. Now the pattern multiple for this blanket is six plus four. So what that means is you're going to chain in multiples of six, 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 for as wide as you want your blanket to be, then add four chains at the very end. Now, for this tiny sample that I'm going to show you, I'm going to chain 18, then add my four chains at the end for a total of 22 chains. So that's my 22 chains for this little tiny sample. 
For row one, we're going to be working into the fourth chain from the hook. So this loop on your hook does not count as anything. You want to count the fully made chains back. One, two, three, four. And into that fourth chain, place a double crochet. Now these three skipped chains here that you have count as a double crochet stitch. Carry on placing a double crochet into each of the chains all the way down your row. So at the end of row one, you will have a neat line of double crochet stitches with those three chains at the beginning here, which count as a double crochet. So we'll be working into the top of that one on the return row. So for row two, chain one and turn. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch and we're going to be working into this very first stitch here. So that's your chain one, ignore that. And we're going to be working into the stitch itself directly below it. Now grab your pom-pom yarn with the sort of two pom-poms that you cut off. And you just want to lay it against your work. So when we crochet our stitches, we're going to be crocheting over this cord and sandwiching it in between the sort of crochet layers. So we're going to pop a double crochet into this very first stitch and you want to sandwich that cord in with it. So you're crocheting over that as you crochet into the stitches. Now pull that bit of cord so that the first pom-pom is snug here. Now what we're going to do is lay this to the front and place a double crochet in the next stitch. So where that pom-pom is going to lie, place a double crochet. Then get your pom-pom back and lay this cord against your stitches. So you'll have this pom-pom hanging forward. Now crochet in the next five stitches, a double crochet in each, sandwiching this cord in between your stitches. So five double crochet. Now crochet in the stitch behind where the pom-pom is going to lie. So one double crochet behind the pom-pom. Lay your pom-pom yarn back along. Five double crochet. Make sure you catch that rope of the pom-pom yarn as well when you're doing these five double crochet. Crochet behind all double crochet stitches, double crochet behind where your pom pom is. And 
lay the pom-pom cord sort of you may need to scooch your little pom-pom out of the way and again double crochet in the next five double crochet sandwiching in that cord So for your very last stitch of row two, we're going to be working into the top of this chain three, those skipped chains from that very first row. You're going to place a double crochet in that top of that stitch, but you also want to crochet over the cord. So you'll have to move the pom-pom out of the way to crochet over the bitter cord on the other side of your pom-pom. If you want to pull the other one back a bit, just so you can be a bit more clear. So you can see this is a green bit I've crocheted over. Pull that out of the way a little bit. I'm going to be crocheting and sandwiching this orange bit. So you want to catch that as you pop your double crochet in. So it's sandwiched on either side of that little pom-pom. Then for row three, chain one and turn. That chain one does not count. If you take your hook out for just one second, you can draw the pom-pom yarn around so it's at the back of your work. For row three, we are going to start with a double crochet in the first three stitches. You want to sandwich that cord in as you go. Just pulling this back a little bit to give that last pom-pom on that edge a little bit of slack. Now all your pom-poms, you want them to be on the front of your work. So scooch that pom-pom, push it forward, double crochet in the next stitch. Then bring that yarn, pom-pom yarn back again and double crochet, five, double crochet over that cord, just as before, you just want to sandwich that cord, but you want to make sure that that pom-pom is at the front. So that's my five double crochet. Again, I'm just pulling that pom-pom back a little bit. Push the pom-pom to the front, double crochet in the next stitch. Then bring that cord back and crochet over it for five double crochet. So your pom-poms should be lining up in the middle of your double crochets from the row below. So you're offsetting them. If at any point you get lost as to where you are, in between your pom-poms, you should have five 
double crochet stitches. Push that pom pom to the front to double crochet. Lay that cord back again. And to end the row, you want to end with four double crochet into the last four stitches. So it's just one in each of the last four. So row four is a repeat of row two. So chain one, float this yarn up the side as you come round. So I'm just pulling it around from the back there. And start with one double crochet in that very first stitch and sandwich this cord in at the same time. So we're starting with one double crochet. Push that pom-pom forward, one double crochet behind it, then double crochet five stitches over the cord. Crochet behind the pom pom. Crochet five double crochet over the cord. So you'd keep doing that all the way down your blanket. And for the very last stitch oops, of this row, you want to pull your pom-pom forward. You're going to place a double crochet into the top of this very last stitch, but also sandwich the cord on the sort of other side. <laughs> I hope you know what I mean. So I've sort of got it in a U shape here. You just want to catch the other side of that pom-pom under that double crochet. Then chain one, turn. I'm getting my pom poms in a, in a mess. So I'm turning my work this way because then the pom pom yarn is already at the back. And for row five, it is a repeat of row three. So sandwiching this cord, start with three double crochet. So that's one, two, Three. Push that pom pom forward so it's at the front of your work. Then bring it back and crochet over the cord for five stitches. My pom-poms are being a nightmare back here. So I've got my five double crochet, push the pom-pom forward, double crochet in that space where it would be. Bring the cord back and crochet over for five. 
you do that all the way down the blanket push that pom-pom forward and then you end with four double crochet stitches. So your pom-poms should be neatly aligning with each other. You would repeat those two rows for the full length of your blanket. So start with one double crochet, work your way along and end on one double crochet. And then the next row you start with three double crochet and you end with four. So I'm gonna go ahead and crochet up a few more of these pom-pom rows, alternating these two last two rows that we did. So I'm gonna add a couple more rows, then meet me back here and I will show you how to finish off your main body of the blanket itself, so this section, and then I will show you how to crochet the border. So meet me back here in just a mo. Okay, so I have crocheted up a couple more rows. Now this is where I want to end my blanket. So what we need to do is with your remaining pom-pom string that is hanging out, grab your scissors, leave two pom-poms just like we did at the beginning or more if you wanted to and snip the end of your pom-pom yarn. Now that shows you what happens to the cord if you cut too close to these pom-poms. So be really, really careful at this stage, really careful because you don't want to have this pom-pom here fray away to nothing. You want to very, very, very carefully, oh, please go carefully, just like we did at the beginning on here, you want to trim the two pom-poms off this cord. Now, please go careful at this stage because it will be horrifying if you accidentally cut that off and you had nothing to secure your, all your work that you've done. So go ahead and very carefully trim off these pom-poms. All right, I have left mine <laughs> slightly fatter than these ones because I'm paranoid, <laughs> paranoid that they're gonna come undone. So you have trimmed off your final pom-pom. So now we're just going to chain one, turn your work and place a double crochet in every stitch all the way along the row. So that's my very last double crochet of the row. That's the entire body of my tiny, tiny blanket complete. So chain one, snip your yarn, pull that through and pull it tight. Now for the border, the border will be done with the right side facing you, which is of course all these beautiful pom-poms here. So you would want to reattach your yarn to this very first stitch over here. You do that by popping your hook underneath the first stitch, bring your yarn in. Now, for my blanket, I use the same color as the body of the blanket, so this same jasmine color. But for ease of this tutorial, I'm going to go and grab a contrasting color so you can see exactly what I am doing and where. So I've brought in a contrasting colour, just so you can see, and I like to pop a slip knot onto the hook. And 
and then bring that through the first stitch so you're ready to start the row. So you're going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch, and place a single crochet in that exact same stitch. Don't worry about that little knot, you can tuck that away when you weave this end in later, although I will be crocheting over this tail as I go. So we're going to place a single crochet in every stitch all the way along this top row. Meet me here before this very last stitch so we can go around the corner together because it's a little bit different. So just a single crochet in every stitch across the top row. So I've stopped just before my last stitch. Now, what we need to do on this border is because these pom-poms come right up to the edge, we need to thicken up this side border on both sides so it matches the top and bottom a little bit better. So you can see you've got crochet fabric at the top and the bottom, but nothing really along the sides. So to solve that, in this very last stitch of the top row, place a single crochet, chain two, and then a double crochet, all into that same stitch to form your first corner. Then we're going to work down the side, two double crochet stitches around each row. So this is my first row here, two double crochet. This is my next row here, two double crochet. Next row here, two double crochet. Work your two double crochet all the way down the side of your blanket. So you can see that with the contrast in colour, it's really obvious where I have gone, but not so much when you use the same colour. So you'll have come down the first side and you'll have got to your chain three right from the very, very first row. So two double crochet around there as well, so into that sort of space. And then into the chain, bottom chain of those three, you're going to place a double crochet. I'm working into the chain itself, double crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. So you're turning the corner, just like you did up here, and adding extra width to this side. Then single crochet in every stitch along the bottom. When you get to this very last chain where your slip knot is from when you very first started your blanket, you're going to place a single crochet, chain two, and a double crochet. Now we're going to work two double crochet in each row as you go up the side. Only this 
time you're going to be working over this is your original very first bottom tail you want to sandwich this as you go and as you come up higher sandwich this next one as well so you're crocheting over your pom-pom yarn tails as you go two double crochet in each row See how I'm sandwiching everything in. <laughs> For your actual main blanket, you'll have a lot more room in between tails. Obviously, this is a tiny little sample. So on your blanket, you'll have longer where you could even lay this second one that way if you wanted to as you crochet up to meet it. I hope that makes sense. I'm sure it does. <laughs> I'm sure you all get what I mean. So I'm just going to leave that one out of the way for a minute and bring this one, crochet over this one this way. Oops. You just want to basically trap the tails of your pom-pom yarn. When you reach the top, you're going to place two double crochet into this around this stitch and then end within that very first stitch where you placed your first single crochet, end with a double crochet, chain two and slip stitch to join to that very first single crochet of the round. So you've come all the way around adding width to the side. Bottom chain's a little bit tighter, but that's okay. So for the second round of this border, same principle, but we're going to be working with, instead of double crochets, we're going to be doing half double crochets. So chain one, pop a single crochet in that same stitch, and single crochet in all the single crochet across the top row. When you reach this chain two space, single crochet, chain two, half double crochet into that space. Then half double crochet in every stitch down the side. When you reach this bottom chain two space, half double crochet, chain two, single crochet. Then single crochet in every stitch along the bottom. So you can see you're adding still a bit of width along the side, but keeping it much shorter on the top and bottom. In this bottom chain two space, single crochet, chain two, half double crochet, then half double crochet in every stitch back up the side. In this final chain two space, half double crochet, chain two, single crochet. And you're going to join with a slip stitch to that very first single crochet of the row. So row three of the border is this lovely crab stitch edging, which gives this really nice corded effect. Now, personally, I found 
I needed to go down a hook size for this. I had to go down to a five millimeter from my six millimeter. So it literally just meant I took that one out and started crocheting with a slightly smaller hook, purely because this sort of corded edge was adding a bit too much of a sort of ruffly wave when I crocheted it with the six. So dropping down a hook size for this crab stitch border may work for you too. By all means, experiment with your six if you don't have a five, but that's just a little heads up. That's what I had to do at this stage was drop down to a five millimeter hook. Now, if you know how to do the crab stitch or the reverse single crochet as it's known, then you're good to go. We would be working that from this point all the way round, and you would do a reverse single crochet in every stitch of the round. And in these chain two corner spaces, you do two reverse single crochet, two crab stitches there. Now, what I'm going to do is quickly change back to this jasmine color, just so there is a bit of contrast here, so I can show you how to do the crab stitch if you have never done it before. So bear with me, I'm just going to change back to my jasmine colour. So I'm in this stitch now, I have switched out, I've just knotted it at the back really briefly, so I have the sort of contrasting shade to show you. So you're going to chain one and for the crab stitch you work not forwards into the next stitch but into the stitch behind you. So you're now going to be working in the reverse way hence reverse single crochet. And it is just single crochet stitches we're doing. Crab stitch is one of those stitches that looks difficult, but if you give it a go, you'll realize actually it's really, really simple. So you reach with your hook, give yourself a bit of slack. Don't be tight and angry on this round if you're naturally quite a tight crocheter. We're going to be putting our hook into this stitch behind where we joined. So I've just popped it into that single crochet. Then yarn over and pull through, just as you normally would. You'll have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both those loops. That is a reverse single crochet or crab stitch. Then you'll be immediately in your chain two space where you're going to need to do two, do two of them. So keeping loose still, put your hook into the chain two space, catch the yarn at the back, pull it through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through those two loops. Same again, work into that same space, just place your hook back. I'm keeping my finger on this loop as I go in, catch that yarn, bring it through, two loops, yarn over and pull through two. Then I'll be working into this stitch. So give myself a bit of slack, put my finger on that loop, into that hook, into that stitch, bring the yarn through. The more you go, the more you will get this lovely corded ridge. So working into the stitch behind Don't pull it tight at any point. You don't want to be too angry. And just keep going all the way around in every stitch. And in your chain two corner spaces, do two crab stitch. So you can see it gives this beautiful cording as you go round. So for your final stitch, 
this is where we slip stitched earlier. Pop your final reverse single crochet in that stitch. Then give yourself a decent long tail. Pull that out of the stitch and grab a large eye needle and just thread up that yarn tail. Then to secure it, you kind of want it to lie almost seamlessly. So what I do is go through the front of that first stitch you did to pull it in line. Then go around the back and back into, I'm just dragging it along into that last stitch. So you're sort of securing it down almost invisibly. Then you can go ahead and weave in this end as normal, which I'm not going to do right now because I think we have all sat through quite enough from me. <laughs> so kudos if you have made it this far into the video. You deserve some sort of medal, I'm sure. But give everything a little tug into shape. So this bottom edge of mine has been a little bit tight the whole way through. So you can see how it's pulling in slightly. But that's nothing a decent sort of pin out and puff it with steam or ultimately it doesn't really matter if you're using the blanket does it matter if your edges are not absolutely picture perfect just give it a little tug into shape and jobs are good in so i hope you all enjoy crocheting your pom-pom blankets it is a rather long video so if you are still here listening to me now <laughs> Thanks for staying. I'm I'm impressed. <laughs> so until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.